Hey, Doc, have you heard of hexahydrocannabis something or HHC? Bruh. All right, guys, so there are more and more of these semi-synthetic cannabinoid compounds popping up left and right in cannabis commerce. I'm sure you guys are all starting to lose track too. Don't fear, that's why I'm here. By the way, if you like the content so far and you feel like you're learning something, or if I've even changed your mind about cannabis for the better, then amazing, because that's really why I'm here. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel and like the videos. It'll mean a lot to me, and it does help promote the channel. All right, so so far we've talked about Delta-8 THC and THCO. Today, we're gonna be talking about HHC, HHCO, and HHCP. Let's dive right in. HHC, or hexahydrocannabinol, was first isolated in 1944 by adding hydrogen molecules to Delta-9 THC by some American chemist. So it's basically a hydrogenated version of THC. Hexahydrocannabinol is psychoactive, and anecdotal evidence describes HHC to be a little bit more milder than Delta-9 THC in terms of its high or psychoactivity. We may or may not find hexahydrocannabinol in trace amounts in hemp. However, most if not all of the hexahydrocannabinol in cannabis commerce is derived from hemp-derived CBD in a lab through chemical processes. And this is where it starts to kind of get iffy for me as we'll touch on later. All right, so moving on. What is HHCO? HHCO is a derivative of hexahydrocannabinol. More specifically, HHCO is the acetylated version of hexahydrocannabinol. Hmm. Hmm. This looks awfully familiar, Dr. Adriani. Where would I have seen something like this before? Ah, it appears that you've been paying attention. We have seen this before with Delta-9 THC and THCO. THCO is the acetylated version of THC. Oh yeah. So like if we add the O to the THC, it becomes stronger, right? Bruh, yes. Adding the acetyl group or the O to THC increases its potency and makes its effects felt much longer and stronger. Likewise, after adding the acetyl group to hexahydrocannabinol, HHCO has been said to be about 1.5 to two times more potent than HHC, which should greatly increase the high. What's more, HHCO is believed to be the closest thing to true Delta-9 THC. Unfortunately, I cannot confirm or deny this as I have no personal experience with it, but I'll just leave it at that and I'll take the word for it. All right, so then what is HHCP? HHCP, yeah, you know me. HHCP, yeah, you know me. Bruh. HHCP, if you haven't guessed, is another hexahydrocannabinol derivative, but this one's much less commonly known. HHCP is made by enhancing the structure of hexahydrocannabinol's 5-carbon side chain, and this changes the way in which it interacts with the CB1 receptor. Specifically, we're adding two carbons to the 5-carbon side chain. Adding to hexahydrocannabinol side chain means that this cannabinoid will bind to the CB1 receptor up to 30 times more efficiently. And this leads to HHCP being about 10 times more potent than normal hexahydrocannabinol which I'm assuming is pretty strong. And while we're just comparing cannabinoids here, more anecdotal evidence describes that HHCP is believed to be much stronger than Delta-9 THC. And this is kind of where it gets iffy for me again. I don't know if I really need or want much stronger than Delta-9 THC. The more manipulated or synthesized a compound is, the more dangerous it can get. Now hear me out. Synthetic cannabinoids like K2 and Spice, if you take too much, you can actually die from these or overdose from these. Whereas with like normal cannabis, Delta-9 THC, there's not enough of it where you could take, you couldn't pay enough money to kill you. There's not, like, it just doesn't work that way. But synthetic cannabinoids are different. I'm not saying that HHCP is gonna kill you, but the more manipulated the compound is, the stronger it gets, the more potent it gets. These are the same kinds of things that we do see with synthetic cannabinoids, so just be careful. But this does kind of lead me to the next question. Are these semi-synthetic cannabinoids safe? All right, guys. So if in a perfect world, everything was ideal and we trusted these companies, everything was literally up to par, all standards met, the products we were getting were isolated and purified properly, and we can ingest these molecules as if they were coming from a pharmacy, then you know what? I would be more inclined to try out these products because if we just break everything down to its simplest parts, they're all derivatives of THC. We already know how THC acts on our body. The more manipulated or synthesized it gets, the less I can kind of trust it. That doesn't mean it won't have the same or similar effects. So I'm not saying these things are going to kill you, but now it really comes down to, okay, are the companies that are making and selling these products to us, do they actually contain HHC or HHCO and not some other like synthetic cannabinoid or THC itself? Also, do these companies purify and isolate the products that we are consuming properly and effectively for us? Are they leaving any unwanted byproducts or any harmful residual products that's still within the product that we're taking? There's a lot of ambiguity and not knowing it is enough for me to just not want to do it. Maybe when things become more standardized and there's more testing done, then sure, let's give it a try. But for now, just play it safe. 
at the end of the day, it's always up to you what you guys consume. For these products, the legalities vary by state to state, but because of the 2018 Farm Bill, these guys are inevitably legal. Hey, hey, Dr. Andreoni, I have another question. If I take HHC or HHCO or the P1, will I pass a drug test still? This is a question that I get asked a lot. Will these semi-synthetic cannabinoids show up on drug tests or will you test positive for THC or anything like that if you use these products? The answer is more likely yes than no, and I'll tell you why. The same reason that all these semi-synthetic cannabinoids are popping up is because they're just minor adjustments or manipulations to THC or its derivative, right? So in that same regard, these minor manipulations may not be enough to change the actual product after it's been metabolized. So when you metabolize THC, you get 11-hydroxy-THC, and then you get 9-carboxy-THC. That's the guy that shows up on drug tests. So any THC derivative is gonna be metabolized in the same, if not similar manner. So yeah, you could probably expect those metabolites to also trigger the drug tests. All right, y'all, I hope this helped and I'll see you next time.